Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So one of the questions on a lot of people's minds at the moment will be when to harvest garlic. And in this video what I'm going to talk about is when to harvest garlic and how to store your garlic so you can make sure it lasts for the whole year or for as long as possible. So as you can see behind me, these are my garlic beds and you can see that some of the plants are looking a little bit worse for wear. Now I've left them as long as I can possibly leave them because I wanted to show you what happens with that traditional method, there's a, there's a saying that says um, plant garlic on the shortest day and harvest it on the longest day. And there's a little experiment that I want to show you today. And they're in the beds behind me and you can see what I've done with them and I'll do a comparison between weight and quantity and quality and see which one's which. You can see some of this yellowing and you can see on the spores here, this is a disease called rust. The telltale sign of rust these little yellowing with these orange blotches in the middle. If you see this yellowing and you're unsure whether it's rust or not, if you run your hands along the leaf, you'll see yellowing appear on your hands, just there. So you'll see that yellowing that appear on your hands and that's the yellowing from the rust. You can just about see it. I don't, don't know how well you can see it on camera. Unlike onions, you don't wait for garlic to fall over before you harvest it. This yellowing is a telltale sign that it's ready. And here, these are some quite nice bulbs actually. One of the things about garlic is you'll see these scapes that appear on the, on the stems of the garlic as they mature. And these are edible. These are, in, in actual fact, the whole plant of the garlic is edible, the leaves, the stalks, everything is edible. Um, I wouldn't eat the ones with the rust on it, but if you've got some nice clean leaves, especially when it's growing at an early stage, pick a couple of leaves off each plant and they're quite, they're really good to add garnish to a, uh, a salad or to add to a, uh, a dish that you're cooking. It gives it that garlic taste without overpowering it. And you can take these scapes just like that, snap them off and you can cook that, snip the end off there, snip it there where it's tender. So find where it's tender like that and then take that, snip the end off and you can cook that in a little bit of butter and it tastes like a garlicky asparagus. Here's a perfect example of one that's gone a little bit over. With garlic you do need to give them a little bit of a dig rather than try and sp you know, pull them like onions. And here's one that's gone over. If you can see through the leaf or, or through the stem it's putting out these other shoots. If I left that in the ground for much longer, these would actually sprout and turn into garlic on their own. So we haven't had a rain here for uh, a proper rain, I mean, uh, for, for, for a good while. And you can see how dry the soil is. Tayyip, hey, can you help me with this? Get the little fork and come and help me with this. So this is a nice double one. So put your fork in, dig away from the bull, push it in, push it in, push it in. Push it in. For the price of one. No, 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 look, you're, you're pulling out before you've got your fork all the way in. Now give it a push. Now give it a pop. You'll hear that pop. There you go. As soon as you hear that pop, it's ready to pull out. See those... hear a bunch of cracking noises, so... See, those roots go down quite deep into the soil. And what you want is to... You don't, you don't want to pull it... You don't want to pull the stem off. You want to pull it off nicely with like that. You don't have to take all the dirt off. Just leave the dirt on. You make a pile next to you, and we'll see who's pulled up most of the most garlic. Wait, Baba, yeah. That garlic piece I got yeah. Yeah, you can take it back if you want. Where is it? It's there behind me. Now, when you're harvesting your garlic, try and harvest it when it hasn't rained for a couple of days, and that way, what you'll do is you'll take up the least amount of water onto the actual bulb. So the bulb will have actually taken up the least amount of water and it won't have excess water in it when you're trying to cure it and dry it. Those dry bulbs just take, you know, store much better than if, they've, if they're absolutely soaking wet. So one thing I want to show you here is in the middle of my garlic, what I did was I stuck in a few broad bean seeds. Now, broad beans are ideal for this because they stay quite short. So planting amongst garlic is absolutely perfect. You know, planted uh, late springtime, so they'll give me a late on harvest. I found some gaps in amongst my garlic and I just planted them, and they're coming on. They're just they're in flower now and they're setting bulb. They're setting uh, pods now, so I'll have broad beans from the same space. 
So this is how you can get two or three harvests in one go. So this is the bed of garlic that I was talking about. Now, this was planted around my normal time in October. And in order to do this experiment, I've actually let these garlic plants go a little bit over. And I've ended up harming myself actually because they won't store as well. You see, here are all the plants. So I've got wild borage that's growing randomly amongst my garlic. And while I'm digging, I'm disturbing it, but I want to reroute it because that's going to be fantastic for the bees. What we're going to do with this one is we're going to compare this harvest to the one that's planted in you know, on the longest, shortest day and then harvested on the longest day. And we'll see how old, how that um, old tail works with us. Here, this is the garlic that I planted on the shortest day. So I planted this on the December, the, uh, around December the 21st. And we're harvesting it roughly around June, the mid-June as well. The first thing you'll notice is the plants are nowhere near as healthy as the other plants in any of my other beds. In any of the beds that were October planted garlic from the size of the plants I don't think we're going to have very very good bulbs now this bed actually is one of my best beds in terms of the soil um, there's a lot of fertility that comes straight out the greenhouse washes out into here and it's a it's a good sunny patch so it's one of my best beds that I've dedicated to this experiment and even in my best bed I don't think we're going to have the results that you get from uh, that I've got from my other beds. So look, they're the ones that look the biggest in this bed. So I'm gonna get picking this bed, then we'll do a weigh-in and compare this bed to the bed over on that side, which is roughly the same size, contains the roughly about the same amount of bulbs, and we'll see which ones produce more, and we'll compare the bulbs as well. So on either side of me are my two experimental beds. This is the garlic that I planted towards the end of October, and I've just pulled it off. And you can see that the plants are quite healthy. They're still looking quite strong. There's a little bit of garlic rust on them, but that's fine. And this is the garlic that I planted on the shortest day and I've harvested on the longest day. The plants just weren't strong enough. They, did, they just didn't seem to get established well enough. So look at the size difference in bulbs. They're just nowhere near the same same sort of quality bulb. Um, and if you want to compare the red ones, they're still sm they're still smaller than the red ones as well. So I'm not going to weigh them. I don't think I need to weigh them. We've got more than do just by looking just by eye, I can see that there's more than double on that side compared to this side. Yeah, I mean there they are. I should have really pulled these garlics probably two weeks ago in order to make this video. I've left this garlic to go over a little bit just so I can show you uh, when, you know, I can make this video for you and show you when to harvest the garlic. Ideally, this should have been pulled a couple of weeks ago. I see a lot of people, they want some really nice looking bulbs. So what they do is they peel off, you know, this outer layer. They trim the roots. Trimming the roots is absolutely fine, not a problem. But garlic is not like the same as onions if you peel off an outer layer you're not going to end up with another layer that's going to protect the actual bulb with an onion each layer you know um, will dry up and it'll protect the bulb whereas with garlic it's not it's not the same if you if you peel off this you'll very soon get to the actual bulb itself with onions it, you've got lots of layers and they all match up so if it, so if i wanted a really nice looking bulb what a lot of people on social media do is they peel this layer back and they've got a really attractive looking bulb after that. Yeah. But now, once, they, once they've peeled all this back, they've got nothing to protect the actual garlic. If you're trying to store this for a long time, I mean, we grow enough garlic to last us the whole year. So let me crack this bulb open and we'll show you the way the, the way they are. So there's another layer peeled off and you're at the bulb. So it's two layers and then the bulb, whereas with an onion, you've got lots and lots of layers. 
So if you did peel the outer layer off to make yourself an attractive bulb, you've got another layer to dry off and form the outer skin. Whereas this one, if you, if you take a couple of layers off, you've got nothing left to protect the individual cloves. Make sure you're not peeling off this outer layer because that's a protect layer of protection. Yes, trim the roots. Yes, uh, brush off any excess dirt, but don't do yeah, don't do what I just showed you. Don't don't go for that kind of bulb. You'll be lucky for that to store a couple of months. You can see all my garlic behind me, and this will probably last as the best part of a year. Now, in order to get this to last as a year, what we've got to do is we've got to cure it. And ideally, on a sunny day, what we do is we just spread it out on the grass, spread it out on the grass, spread it out on the on the concrete, anywhere we can, and dry it off and if you're going to do this on grass make sure your grass isn't wet because it will just defeat the de defeat the purpose the reason that i like doing this on the, on the lawn is because any excess dirt it just goes on onto the grass and it goes on to feed my lawn we're just going to dry it off as much as we can on the grass <coughs> any bulbs that have gone beyond and they've gone into this sort of stage that's a bulb that's gone way past uh, ready to harvest. That won't store very well. So that's going in my either freeze or my cook now pile. When you're looking at your bulbs, make sure you're identifying those bulbs that won't store well and, that, and putting them into a separate pile and those piles that will uh, store well. See, we've got some really nice, really good looking bulbs here, some really big ones. And I'm quite happy with that. So these are the biggest bulbs out of the lot. So they're not bad. They're not, they're not bad size at all. They're not elephant garlic. They're ordinary supermarket garlic. So yeah, we've done, we've done all right with these. Now, what I'm gonna do in a couple of days is once this is dried, you'll notice these roots become brittle, but I'll trim the roots and I won't, but I won't go into uh, any sort of lower than that. I'll leave a nice root plate at the bottom store garlic light with onions upside down that way any water's not going into the bulb itself because we're going to be storing this for up to a year we don't want that we don't want to try and keep our garlic as in the best condition that we can keep it if you're good at platting you can plat these and the advantage of platting them is it just uh, reduces the amount of space in a couple of days once these stalks have dried up a little bit we'll start platting these and we'll plait probably all of this garlic in, in, into probably about four long rows and we'll have you know four long rows that we can just pull out lay in the sun and then if it starts raining just take it all back into the shed and hang them there overall i don't think this is a bad harvest it's one of it's it's probably not our best harvest that we've ever had it's a harvest that i can be proud of um i'm happy with this it'll probably see us through to probably next April, March time. We probably won't get a full year out of it. We'll probably get about 10 months at least. But yeah, there's a lot of garlic here. I'm going to keep on just pulling out all the ones that won't store well. So anything that's lost its protective layer, I'm pulling them to uh, an eat now or freeze pile. And um, we're just going to cure as much of this as we can on the sun. Uh, in the sun rather. Some people have asked me before that what do you do uh, when garlic starting to sprout? In a normal year, the majority of our garlic doesn't sprout. Sometimes you, we do get the odd shoots that start popping up. Because you're storing this garlic at home, it's a lot easier. We're not on a commercial basis. So rather than trying to keep it at a chill temperature, once those temperatures start to rise next year and the gar garlic might look like it's sprouting, that's when to you know, take it out from the shed peel it, f blitz it and freeze it as a frozen mush, you know, frozen mashed garlic. That's the way we'd do it. We've still got bulbs whole that we're still using from last year. We'll start making some achar soon uh, and we'll have that back up on the market for you guys uh, to, to ta try. I'm going to get on with drying this garlic. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. We also make videos on Patreon. So uh, if you do want to support our channel, that's a great way of supporting us. I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.